Yeah. It's recording. Good. Let's just do a run through just to make sure. Alright. And then look, we'll do a practice run, then I'll double check it and then we'll start over. Okay. Well, my name is Anna Santana and I'm here with Ryan and Carlos Salazzo on November 24th in the suburbs of Chicago. So Ryan, can you tell us who you are, what you do, and why we're here today? Well, my name is Ryan Garcilazzo, as she said, and I own the Rehab Depot. I'm a real estate investor and house flipper. Uh, we're actually currently in one of my properties that is on the market, currently done and staged. That's where we're sitting at this table. It's all staged and very nice, and we're ready to have some fun. <laughs> but the reality of why we're here is because I'm here to help you and you ask away all your questions. I'm here Amazing. for you. All right. So our first question for today is, how did your education and life experiences lead you to where you are currently today? So, you know, I, have a, I like to say I have two educations, right? One is the street. Right? I, I grew up in a certain family, uh, we're Latin, and there's a, there's a lot of culture that comes with that, there's a lot of life lessons that come with that, um, and, and I think common sense is born from that, a lot of people lack common sense, I don't. Um, and then I did go to college, I had some formal education after, after high school, um, and you combine those, and in my opinion, that's the superpower. Mm -hmm. So, you know, having both the balance of, of common sense and having that also educational logic together is a powerful force, and that kind of led us down the path of, of growth because we grew very fast as a company, um, and I, I honestly dedicated to just common sense and life experiences. Right. So what exactly <laughs> is your company name? What are you guys known for, and what are you doing currently? So so I used to own the Garcilaz Group. We were general contractors for almost a decade, and that's where we built our brand. That's where we built our names in Rottweiler's Redevelopment. We uh, flipped hundreds of homes, walked thousands of homes, and we realized that we were doing it at such a level that most companies couldn't do it, especially here in Chicago, and Chicago's huge. Mm -hmm. That we figured, you know, with our ex expertise and our experience, we can now help others. So that's when we, you know, the Rehab Depot was born uh, within the last three years or so. And that's when we decided to help investors and not take from investors. So as a general contractor, what I'm doing is you're hiring me and I've got a bottom line, which means I have to make money as well to actually do the construction of the property. Right. Now what we do is we consult clients and investors how to work with their contractor by understanding the art of rehabbing. And we have classes, we have online courses, and we also do hand-holding, which is the consulting aspect of walking them through the project A to Z. Amazing. So who would you say <clears throat> your biggest influence then is? Um, I have a lot of influences. Um, you know, my father is one of my influences because my father used to be a guy that would work 24-7. He was never home. Um, he wasn't a guy that was out philandering. He was not drinking. He was not partying. He was working two, three jobs to, to help us get out of Waukegan, if you will. Uh, so he's a big influence on me because he, he took us out of a certain area, a certain neighborhood that wouldn't have allowed me to grow, you know, grow the way I would have. Right. I probably would have used <clears throat> my brain to do evil shit. You know, at the end of the day, I probably would have done worse. Uh, but I, I, I do credit him uh, tremendously for taking that risk of being the first of his family to move out of the area and giving me a foundation in the Libertyville area. Um, I do have mentors. I believe in mentors big time. Another mentor of mine is Julio Rosales. Um, he's a family friend. A lot of you guys know who he is. He is always around. You know, I can always ask him questions when I'm in a jam. I, you know, I give him the example. I'm like, what would you do if you were, you know, me? Am I making the right decisions? Am I not making the right decisions? And he's the kind of guy that will give it to you straight. And I'm the kind of guy that will give it to you straight. So I kind of look for guys like that who, who just look at you and say, look, you're doing fine, but you got to keep moving forward. You know, that kind of thing. Positive reinforcement. I agree. So what would you say, um, what are some awards and recognitions that you and your company have won as a result of your success? Man, <laughs> lots of them. Um, so we were uh, a top 550 contractor, uh, five years in a row, 2014 to now. Uh, what that basically, thank you. What that basically means is that we were a top 550 contractor for that specific year out of 65,000 contractors nationwide. Uh, another award we got was the Big 50, which is like a fraternity of brothers, right? So. That meant for one year, we were the top 50 out of 60,000 plus contractors, which means we'll never have to get that designation again. We're, we're considered the elite. Um, and then we were on the Inc. 5000 list of top 5,000 companies up and coming. Um, and I've had different type of recognitions from Pro Remodeler Magazine or Remodeling Magazine, all these different things. So again, it kind of goes back to the original question is how did we kind of get here? Is because when we started leveraging all that experience and getting all those awards, the time was perfect really to grow and say, okay, let me come off the field and help you. So, kind of a more personal question, if you don't mind me asking. Yeah, um, here we go. <laughs> what is one of the hardest sacrifices you think up to now you've had to make? <clears throat> and how has this affected you and your company, either positively or negatively? So, um, I'm a father of twins, as you know. Um, they're four years old. They just turned four years old two, weeks, two or three weeks ago. Um, I'm fortunate and cursed at the same time. Let me explain why. I had the luxury of having a multi-million dollar company before they were born. And I was able to take all the risk and make 
the biggest mistakes I'd made prior to their arrival, right? They weren't even a thought. It just happens, right? Life works funny. So I was able to grow this business and take crazy risks to get where I needed to get long before they came. And then at 33, I found out I'm going to be a father, which is fantastic, right? So to, to counter that question, it, it's good and bad, right? Because most people will have, probably have not found success before the kids come. Because usually they have kids so early in life. It's usually in their 20s because that's what society does where they can't take those risks anymore. And I was fortunate enough to be able to do all that almost 10 years before the kids came. And then it changed me because now I'm like, okay, I built this. This is mine. Now how do I tweak it so I don't lose it? Because now I have a reason to lose it, right? I, I have everything to lose now. So it changes your mindset on how you operate. Um, I've become a little softer in my delivery. I've become a little wiser in my you know, strategic moves because I'm the kind of guy in business that I look for an enemy on purpose and I put him on my pegboard. And I tell them, I'm like, I'm coming for you. And I have to have that visual. Uh, I have to have that competition there at all times. And a lot of people will tell you different things. Like they read, you know, audio books and they, they're inspired by this and they like to post quotes. And I'm the kind of guy that's like, if you're going to post a quote, you better live it, right? Don't, don't, don't be phony with the bullshit. And that's the way I lead my business and all the people that work for me and with me. And all of my clients understand that dynamic as well is live who you, be who you are, right? So... It changed me in a very good way with the kids coming because I knew that I had a foundation. Financially, we were good. Uh, we weren't struggling. You know, everything was like perfect at that level. So it was a good timing to have the kids. But that also changed me as a man because not only did I grow up, I had to grow up, obviously. <clears throat> and I'm not suggesting by 33 I wasn't growing up, but for those who know me, uh, they might still think I haven't grown up. But the reality is that's kind of shaped it. It molded it. So it was like a hard rock that was skyrocketing, right? Just, just vaulting into the to the atmosphere and now it's being softened up so I can go further and further and further up. Amazing. Well, does that make sense? It does. You give a lot to me. Thank you. I appreciate that. This is a beautiful home you have here. It sounds like you're doing really well and I wish you the best of luck in the future. Thank you for hey, talking with me today. Appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Take care.